You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Pakistani terrorists launch grenade attack in Kashmir. ISI using Khalistan militants to hamper peace in India. United States warns its citizens and diplomats from traveling to Pakistan. And Islamist terrorists stab two people as street am in London. Since the abrogation of the Article 370 that enabled the Indian Union territory to receive direct benefits from the centre, Rattle Pakistan is trying hard to whip up havoc and violence through continuous terror attacks and infiltration bits in Kashmir. However, Indian security forces have been successful in busting all the nefarious anti-India plots hatched in the corridors of Islamabad and Rawalpindi, a report. Kashmir, often called the heaven on earth, has been continuously witnessing violence and chaos owing to the malicious agendas of Pakistan-backed terrorists present in the valley. This week, terrorists launched two rounds of grenade attack in Srinagar's busy Lal Chowk area. The attacks left several Kashmiri civilians and soldiers of Indian security forces injured. The injured, including the soldiers, were admitted to hospital after the blast. The loud explosion caused panic among the people, especially those who had come to the weekly flea market. And, uh, while they were deployed here, somebody has taken the advantage of a Sunday market and uh, thrown a grenade at uh, the CRPF deployment here. As a result, two persons have been injured. They are, uh, the injuries are not serious. Following the grenade attacks, Indian security forces launched a gun battle in which two infiltrated terrorists hiding in Srinagar city were neutralized. According to reports, the counter-terrorism operation was launched after terrorists had attacked a check post in Parimpura in Srinagar city in which one soldier belonging to India's paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force or CRPF was killed. Yeah, two have been neutralized, two militants have been neutralized, yeah. What is the present Kunji? Is cordon going on? Uh, yeah, cordon is going on, things are under control, yeah. The presence of park back terrorists in the valley has been a major cause of concern for India as they continue to indoctrinate the local Kashmiri youth on the commands of Pakistani authorities who shelter the leadership of terror outfits in Kashmir as well as provide them with guidance, training and material support. However, these attempts of Pakistan seem to be failing badly as the number of Kashmiri youth joining terrorist ranks has dropped significantly after the abrogation of Article 370, a provisionary article that kept Kashmiris away from the rest of India. According to the Indian security forces, only 28 youths joined the rank of terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir from 5th August 2019 to 26th January 2020. This represents the 60% drop compared to the number of youths joining the militancy in Kashmir from 1st January 2019 to 4th August 2019, which saw 105 youngsters joining the terror outfits in the valley. The situation in the valley is uh, actually quite better. The number of incidents of violence have gone down. The stone pelting incidents have gone down. The terrorist initiated incidents have gone down, whether it is of grenade throwing or whether it is IED attacks or firings. All those have uh, seen a marked decline over the last six months. While on one hand, Pakistan talks big on crackdown on terrorism and peace in the region, on the other, the country is leaving no stone unturned to disrupt peace in Kashmir. Scrapping of the temporary special status of Jammu and Kashmir has badly rattled Pakistan, which is desperately carrying out ceasefire violations to infiltrate terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir in order to create unrest in the valley. However, vigilant Indian forces have thwarted almost all of their ill designs in past few weeks. A significant number of terrorists have been eliminated while many others have been apprehended. Meanwhile, the Indian security agencies feel that the situation in the newly created Union territory has improved after repealing the Article 370. 
and there has this been an increase in the ceasefire violations on the LC. And that was to be expected because he is uh, trying his best to push across the terrorists who are there in his uh, various camps and launch pads. And uh, because of the winter, he is finding it difficult to push them across and therefore is resorting to increased number of violations at different parts of the LC and trying to push them through to our side, but he has not been successful in that. And how is the army dealing with it, sir? We are responding in kind and uh, as I said, he has not been successful. Most of the infiltration attempts have been foiled and as, uh, as we have seen that uh, he is now getting desperate to try to push them. While the situation in Jammu and Kashmir is returning back to normalcy, Pakistan has intensified its effort at increasing the strength of terrorists in launch pads along the line of control to create havoc in the region. Such consistent attempts of Pakistan at fomenting trouble and breaching harmony in an otherwise peaceful Kashmir reek of its duplicity. Pakistan is relentlessly facilitating anti-India activities, be it Kashmir or Punjab. Islamabad has been misusing all its state machineries to push in terrorists in the valley and fuel anti-India sentiments in the form of Khalistan to disrupt peace and harmony in India. Those supporting its malicious endeavours receive highest honours in Pakistan, whereas individuals who lag behind in bringing Substantial damage to India received deadliest of rewards by Pakistan's notorious Inter-Services Intelligence Agency, which is the main handler of Pakistan-supported anti-India activities across the world, a report. Pakistan's Inter-Services Intelligence has been tactfully using Khalistani terrorists for unleashing violence and narco-terrorism across the border. Anti-India activities sponsored by Pakistan happen along the border of the Indian state of Punjab and Pakistan. India's western neighbor is using multifold strategies to inject violence into India, along with facilitating terrorist infiltration at LOC, Pakistan's intelligence spy agency, the Inter-Service Intelligence, has turned several chiefs of Sikh terror outfits based in Pakistan into drug smugglers who are destroying a generation of youth of Punjab and other parts of India. Smuggling of weapons and drugs by Pakistan-based chiefs of Sikh terror groups has resulted in a rivalry among the militant Sikh groups who are competing for the ISI's patronage and each one of them is trying to outperform the other in smuggling drugs like heroin in India. Terrorism and uh, narcotics trade, they are closely linked because for uh, terrorist activities, substantial amount of funds are required and all over the world, these funds are generated through the smuggling and the trade of narcotics only. ISI particularly has been involved, that has been pushing drugs into Punjab and that had been encouraging people to go for more and more of drug trade and using that money for uh, their nefarious deeds against our country. In the biggest ever narcotics haul in June 2019, the Indian Customs Department had seized 532 kilograms of heroin worth 2,700 crore, which was smuggled into India from Pakistan in a truck through the trade route at the Atari border. The National Investigation Agency had termed the recovery of lethal drugs as a case of narco-terrorism. Narco-terrorism is carried out by a big syndicate run by ISI in Pakistan who use gullible Sikh individuals from both India and Pakistan for their ulterior motives. Khalistani militants like Gopal Chavla, who outperform ISI's expectations in bringing damage to India, get to live a comfortable life in Pakistan, whereas many get eliminated by the same agency for not being able to deliver the heinous task. Recently, Harmeet Singh alias Happy PhD, a Khalistani militant residing in Pakistan, was killed at the Dera Chahal Gurudwara near Lahore. The murder is suspected to have been executed by the ISI. 
Pakistani authorities had been viewing various persons who are indulging in anti-India activities and they have been regularly scrutinizing their activities. Those who are doing the indulging in these activities in a big way and are successful, they are encouraged there, they are given all sorts of facilities. ISI has also been doing it, uh, monitoring the activities and how in other layman's language how successful or otherwise uh, these uh, persons who are indulging in these activities are. So he was killed and uh, the normal belief is that he was killed only by the ISI because possibly he was not, del he was not able to deliver. He has been uh, sort of killed by ISI. ISI is not true to such elements, such segment which are indulging in anti-India activities. The agenda of ISI is totally different. The agenda of ISI is successfully being carried by persons like Chawla and they are happily living there. You know, th uh, they are getting all sorts of monies and position and everything. According to sources, India had submitted a 23-page dossier of 15 pro-Khalistani activists residing in Pakistan containing events from the past four years during the second round of Kartarpur corridor talks between the two countries in Wagha in July last year. The dossier had year-wise pictorial details of Gopal Singh Chawla, a key Khalistani element, and his anti-India activities on social media. There are growing indications that Pakistan and its notorious spy agency is orchestrating much of this activity as part of a wider campaign to fuel instability in Indian Punjab. ISI is dedicated towards creating, trying to create disturbance in our country, trying to disrupt our normal way of life, trying to encourage uh, narco-terrorism and everything. Certainly there is no doubt that Pakistan has been trying to do this thing and they will continue doing this thing, particularly ISI, as long as they can till such time there is no, not immense pressure from the international lobby as also from our Indian government that ISI has to be told and they have to be shown the mirror that they cannot do such activities against our country, but unfortunately they appear to be totally committed to it. Khalistani secessionists are mere cannon fodder for ISI, which sets and regulates the terms of engagement between two sides. Although a huge force and money is being pushed in to destroy the youth and hamper peace in India, assertive vigilance and several crackdowns leading to multiple arrests have been able to contain the anti-India activities happening at the commands of Islamabad. The United States of America recently issued a new set of advisories for its citizens who are planning to travel to Pakistan. The travel advisory issued by the U.S. State Department has warned its citizens from traveling to Pakistan as the country is under high risk of terror attacks owing to the state patronage being provided to terror groups in Pakistan. The advisory specifically mentions the prevailing threat in Pakistan, Balochistan, POK and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa due to terrorism and extrajudicial kidnappings and killings, a report. Since decades, Pakistan has been paying heavy price for breeding terrorism on its soil. In a latest jolt to Pakistan, the U.S. advised its citizens to reconsider their travel to Pakistan due to terrorism and has asked them not to travel to resty Balochistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, identified as the most dangerous areas due to terror attacks. While Pakistan in general has been placed in level 3 category in the latest travel advisory issued by the U.S., Several other parts of the country, including Balochistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province and POK, have been placed in the most dangerous level 4 category in which U.S. citizens are asked not to travel due to high-risk areas. The United States has finally woken up to the fact to advise its citizens not to travel to Pakistan because of the militant threat over there. Now when America is withdrawing from Afghanistan, it sees that the militant groups over there may try 
to now attack its citizens and also attack in NATO con uh, convoys which are coming out. Therefore, it has now decided to advise its citizens not to visit P Pakistan because Pakistan is unable to control these militant groups over there. Pakistan's airspace is always under high risk of terror attack. Taking cognizance of this threat, the State Department of the USA has informed that the Federal Aviation Administration has issued a notice asserting that the terror groups continue plotting possible attacks in Pakistan. The notice further states that the terrorists may attack with little or no warning targeting transportation hubs, markets, shopping malls, military installations, airports, universities, tourist locations, schools, hospitals, places of worship and government facilities. In view of the growing threat from Pakistan's airspace, the U.S. has asked its diplomats to restrain themselves from traveling to Pakistan as terrorists have targeted U.S. diplomats and diplomatic facilities in the past and information suggests they will continue to do so. Pakistan is the hub of terrorism and this the entire world knows. And the recent attacks on the Chinese embassy, on the uh, other embassies and even on diplomats over there has uh, raised the threat level very high for the diplomats. Diplomats are protected on the immunity under the Geneva Convention, but in Pakistan there is no such law that is going to prevent them from being attacked or being uh, even assassinated in broad daylight. In the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, the United States has warned that terrorist groups are known to operate in the area and the threat of armed conflict between India and Pakistan remains. Active terrorist and insurgent groups routinely conduct attacks against civilians, non-governmental organizations, government offices and security forces. These groups historically have not discriminated between government officials and civilians. Assassination and kidnapping attempts are common, including the targeting of polio eradication teams. Pakistan is using terrorism as its state's policy to intimidate its neighbors around in Southeast Asia and other places too. All people wherever in the world is there a military attack, the threats of this militancy are traced back to Pakistan. Therefore, it seems that Pakistan government and the Pakistan army and the ISI are unable to control all these militants over there. The travel advisories issued to the people of USA is a showcase of dreadful situation of Pakistan. Whether it is civilians or foreign diplomats, everyone is under constant target of terrorists. As a result of which, the USA has also advised its citizens to remain aware of their surroundings and local events and to minimize the duration of trips to public markets, restaurants, government and military institutions and other locations. Just two months after London Bridge terror incident, the United Kingdom's capital once again came at the target of radical Islamic terrorism. Sudesh Amman, a radicalized Muslim youth, went on a killing spree at London's Streatham residential area this week. London police described the incident as Islamic terrorism and informed that Amman shared associations with Pakistan-based Al-Qaeda and Islamic State terror groups and was previously involved in other cases of terrorism as well. A report. A fresh terror incident shook London this week when Sudesh Amman a convicted terrorist strapped a fake bomb and stabbed two people at Streatham, a busy London street, before being shot to death by police. Londoners condemned the stabbing attack, which police said was related to Islamist terrorism. A man was recently released from prison after serving time for terrorism-related offences previously. The 20-year-old is an ISIS and Al-Qaeda affiliate terrorist who had pleaded guilty in November 2018 to six charges of possessing documents containing terrorist information and seven of disseminating terrorist publications. 
Islamic State and Al Qaeda both traced their linkages with Pakistan in South Asian region. Aman had once confessed to his family the desire to carry out acts of terror. In 2017, he had told his brother in a message, "The Islamic State is here to stay." Moreover, Aman had confided in his sibling that he would rather blow himself up in school. At approximately 2 p.m. today, Sunday, the 2nd of February, two people were stabbed in Streatham High Road, Lambeth. Armed officers who were part of a proactive counter-terrorism surveillance operation and were following the suspect on foot were in immediate attendance and shot a male suspect dead at the scene. The suspect had been recently released from prison where he had been serving a sentence for Islamist related terrorism offences. The officers saw that a device was strapped to his body and called in specialist explosive officers and armed officers to deal with the potential threat that posed. Cordons were put in place and it was quickly established that this was a hoax device. The threat posed by radical Islamic terrorism has its origin in Pakistan which is training its youth in jihad provoking them to undertake terror related activities in south asia and around the world a second incident of stabbing on the streets of london by a radicalized islamic youth speaks of the vicious ideology on which muslim youths from pakistan are being preached these radicalized youths from pakistan impart such preachings among range of young muslim men and women situated in west and other non muslim countries they together become a bunch of radicalized people who carry out something called radical islamic terrorism the youth of pakistan in the name of religion are misguided by mullahs by jihadi elements and they fall prey they are so they are so prone to falling prey to these machinations and the cal calculations by jihadis that they are not able to get out and the sole factor is that they you will be blessed by allah and you will go to heaven This is not for the first time that a radical Islamist had unleashed terror on the streets of London. Earlier in 2019, Pakistan origin Usman Khan had stabbed multiple people near the iconic London Bridge before being shot dead by the police. The London Bridge attacker originally belonged to Pakistan occupied Kashmir and lived there for one term before turning terrorist for the first time. After spending a part of his late teen in POK, he returned to UK where he started preaching radical Islamism on the internet and attracted a significant following. He had plans of using land owned by his family in Pakistan occupied Kashmir to build a terror training camp next to an existing mosque in the hope of establishing Sharia law in the region. I think it's pretty really strange that these things seem to repeat themselves and happen this often now. I think people are desensitizing to issues like this which I think is a big concern. It seems pretty similar to what happened at London Bridge a short while ago and it's pretty scary that it happens in your own backyard. Pakistan has allowed its territory to become a staging point for terrorist activities. Its radicalized youth have often been unleashing terror attacks in various parts of the world that pose great threat to global peace and security of which several world leaders have shown concern at various bilateral and multilateral meetings. After two back-to-back -back Islamic state attacks in London, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson said the government would announce fundamental changes to the system for dealing with those convicted of terrorism offenses. And with that we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia we will be back next week with more news views and analysis from the subcontinent meanwhile do keep writing to us at nwsa@ani.com this is surbhi sharma signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia goodbye and take care